<laughs> Ryan. Continue, Right Ryan. off the bat. Hi, I'm Ryan Johnson. There you go. Oh. I'm the director of Glass Onion, and by the time we leave this room, one of these people will be dead. <laughs> Glass Onion is an underwhelming film, and while it does try new things, those new things fail to capture the magic that the original Knives Out had. Now to understand exactly why I feel this way, I think it's important to look at the director himself, Ryan Johnson. And I think we need to look back all the way to the release of The Last Jedi in 2017 to understand exactly how he got here and why some of the mistakes that he made in that film are carried over to this one. Now if you've seen the film, then you will recognize the phrase subverting expectations because Ryan Johnson loves to do that. But in a lot of ways it can become very dangerous because if you do it wrong, you can end up destroying the character arcs of almost all the characters in your film. And that is exactly what Ryan Johnson did. I mean, just look at the reactions that some of the fans had. To me, that felt like the director just going like this to, to fans because we had waited so long for that moment. General Hux, who is a comedian, he's a joke. He's a joke character. He might as well be in Spaceballs. Like, what was the point in that? It could have been a lot better, but they made some horrible decisions. There were some glaring plot holes with such a bad villain that they didn't even give the care to to give you any information on. They just didn't even bother. Was he a Sith? Yes, probably. No, he was not. Maybe. Well, we'll never know. We yeah. Was he from the Outer Rim? How I don't old know. Was he? How old was he? I think it's safe to say that people were not a fan of this film, but to illustrate exactly what went wrong, you need to listen to this clip from another channel called Closer Look, in which they do an analysis on all the problems of The Last Jedi. Specifically, Ryan Johnson's need to subvert expectations. He achieved his goal of division by compromising fundamental aspects of his story for a quick, short-term cash-in of shock. And what are these fundamental aspects that Ryan Johnson is compromising? Well, it's the characters, it's the plot, it's everything that you want from a film that is completely thrown away in order to create that value of shock from the audience. But Ryan Johnson himself claims that this is not necessarily a good idea because the audience is always smarter than what you give them credit for. I think nobody is smarter than the audience and I think it's a fool's game to try and outsmart an audience. I think the thing is to take people on a ride and take them on a roller coaster ride as opposed to seeing it as a chess game. After The Last Jedi, he moves on to create a whole new and original film, one that is all about subverting expectations. And that one, of course, is called Knives Out. But why was Knives Out so much better than The Last Jedi at creating a fun and original plot twist? Well, the truth is that the characters were developed so much better. Because this was an original story, Ryan Johnson had the freedom to make these characters feel as natural as possible. And that's important, especially when you're trying to inject humor into the story. You see, the problem with The Last Jedi was that Ryan Johnson attempted to make the characters comedic in a way that they shouldn't be. A big example of this is Luke Skywalker, a character that a lot of people see as a very serious individual. He made him into a complete joke in this film, and people did not appreciate that. The advantage that Knives Out had was that it was a whodunit mystery, and by nature, all films in this genre tend to have a very whimsical nature to them. So that makes it easy to inject comedy in the right places, and Ryan Johnson was able to do this in such a clever way. In fact, one of the characters that exudes all this comedy is, of course, Chris Evans' character, Hugh. There's a lot of funny and comedic moments here, but they never feel out of place. They feel perfect for the character because the character himself is not a serious guy. One of the smartest things that Ryan Johnson does in this film is the introduction of two important characters, Marta and Thrombi. Marta is very important because we kind of follow the story through her eyes. As the audience, we root for her because she is a charismatic individual. She is extremely kind-hearted, and even when we believe that she may have committed the murder, we still root for her 
because she's just that good of a person. Thrombi serves an even greater purpose because in a lot of murder mystery stories, we never get to spend time with the victim. Thrombi has a huge amount of scenes, not just with his family, but also with Marta. And that is important because his relationship with Marta is what makes us feel bad for Thrombi and what makes us root for Marta. Because out of all the members in his family, the one person that truly actually cared about him was the one that wasn't related to him. Now, another really important thing about murder mystery films is that it should never be too obvious who the culprit is. The director should do a good job at leaving clues and crumbs to lead the audience in the right direction, but it should never be obvious. And that is something that Knives Out does really, really well. Because although it's fairly easy to figure out that Hugh is the one that did it, it's fun and satisfying when you get to the end and he finally gets caught. Overall, the film is a masterclass, not in just storytelling, but in cinematography and in lighting. This film is everything that I was looking for from a murder mystery and much more. It was a really, really great surprise and I finally felt like Ryan Johnson redeemed himself. So now that you know about Ryan Johnson as a director and why I love Knives Out so much, we can finally begin to tackle the topic of this video. Why is Glass Onion such an underwhelming sequel? First big issue that we're going to tackle in this film is the humor. Specifically, at the beginning of the film, there are a ton of references to the pandemic. While I am aware that they filmed this during the height of the pandemic, by the time that the movie came out in 2022, a lot of references and jokes that would be funny at the time feel a little bit irrelevant and outdated. They continue to talk about how it's hard to wear a mask and how we have to work from home, and there's even a shot of Benoit in a bathtub on Zoom. The issue that I have with this is that it positions the movie as if it were to take place in the real world. And I have a problem with this because the original Knives Out felt like such a contained story in its own contained universe, and it didn't really have a lot of references to any outside information. But immediately referencing a current event makes it feel like this movie is going to be some kind of meta commentary on our real world, and you'll see exactly how that becomes a big issue. There are moments when the film tries to be a little bit too relatable, and I think this is most apparent in scenes like when Benoit is playing Among Us, which to be fair, I understand that there is some sort of connection given that the game revolves around finding the imposter, but then there's other scenes with like Dave Bautista's character, how his whole backstory is that he was like a gamer that then became a Twitch streamer, and then he got banned on Twitch for saying too many negative things. I also found it a little bit strange just how many celebrities are shown and talked about in this film. Like, for example, you have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who is on a Zoom call with Benoit. You have Serena Williams, who is giving out workout tips. You have Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. You have Jared Leto's kombucha. All of these references just feel out of place, and every time one of them comes up, it's almost annoying. It seems like Ryan Johnson is once again committing the same mistakes that he made with The Last Jedi. He's trying to create these moments of shock to get a response from the audience, and I just don't think it really works that well. Now, the characters in this film are not as complex as those found in Knives Out. For example, Jamie Lee Curtis. Her character is really, really interesting because obviously she's one of those people that you just love to hate, and you obviously suspect her of killing Thromby, but on the side, there's this like really interesting plot of her potentially figuring out if her husband's cheating on her and all the drama that that caused and of course her husband that's his motivation for killing Thromby. it's such an interesting dynamic and things like that aren't really found in glass onion glass onion creates characters that are exaggerated versions of celebrities and the top one percent as a way to create a meta commentary on how these rich and famous people are idiots and how most of them are ridiculous but hearing a commentary about our society is not why I came to watch this film. I want to be taken on a fun journey, a roller coaster like Ryan Johnson claims he likes to make in his films. But I just don't feel that here. Another problem that I had is how they handle the plot twist. Because in the middle of the film, you find out that Andy is not actually Andy, she's actually Helen, her twin sister. 
and the real Andy actually died several days before the start of the film. And now you follow Helen on her journey to try to figure out who killed her sister. The problem is that by the time that this happens, it becomes very obvious that the killer has to be Edward Norton. And here's the reason. At this point in the film, two people are dead. Andy and Dave Bautista's character. And the only person that would have any grudge against both of those people is Edward Norton. None of the other characters could be responsible because none of them are evil. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are cloud chasers and they will do and say anything to remain in power, but compared to Edward Norton, none of them fit the criteria. Edward Norton has an island, he stole the Mona Lisa, he's rich, and on top of that, he's using this renewable resource that could potentially destroy the environment. It just screams James Bond villain. It's really, really obvious. And maybe that's the point. Maybe, as the glass onion metaphor states, it looks complicated, but in reality, it's right in front of our eyes. At the end, everybody loses. Everyone is left in shambles. Andy never gets the justice that she deserves and Helen has to burn the entire mansion down. I mean, even with the Mona Lisa being burnt, it doesn't feel like Edward Norton's character really gets punished. Sure, his friends are gone, and yeah, his company is going to go under, but it just doesn't feel satisfying. Perhaps that's what Ryan Johnson intended to do. But for me, it just felt a little bit lacking. There's humor where there doesn't need to be, the characters and the plot just feel out of place, and there's references to things that just feel strange and irrelevant. For now, the future of this franchise is unclear. We know Ryan Johnson is set to create more films in this series for Netflix, but I'm worried that if the films continue to go in this direction, it's gonna make the fans really divisive. Regardless, it's clear that Ryan Johnson has a huge passion for this franchise, but I just hope that one day, he's able to find the magic once again.